G'day, Ben from Duck Plain Chicken here with something a little bit different. Today I want to talk about the last year uh, of model making. So I started this channel actually back in September of 2021, I think was my first upload. So it's a bit a bit longer than a year that I've been running this, uh, this YouTube channel. And I thought it was a good opportunity to talk about the models that I'd made and also to talk about, I guess, some of my motivations behind this channel. But first of all, I'd like to thank everyone who's subscribed and especially those who've left kind comments. I have, um, I really appreciate the comments that people have left behind and uh, the, the likes. It makes this worthwhile. I'm not interested in turning this into a career. I already have a job that pays. I don't need another one. So um, I'm not interested in getting lots and lots of subscribers, but I do appreciate that by subscribing, liking and leaving comments, people show their appreciation for what I do. And I certainly appreciate it. So thank you. So talking about the last year and a bit in review and I'm going to start off with the first model that I did a, a build series of. This was a couple of firsts for me. So it was a first for making a video that obviously I put on uh, YouTube about model making. It was also the first time I'd painted a kit using lacquer paints. So previously I'd used water-based uh, paints like uh, Vallejo Model Air, for example. And I hadn't sort of experienced, you know, using lacquers previously. And, and the main reason for that was because I didn't have a proper spray booth. So I set up a spray booth. It's properly vented outside and it made a huge difference as far as the different types of paints I can now use. So I started using lacquer acrylics by SMS or Scale Model Supply, I believe they're called. They're an Australian, uh, Australian company. And so this was the first kit I built and painted using those paints. And I just fell in love with them straight away. They go on silky smooth. They so easy to spray. I don't get any dry tip or anything like that. So it was a bit, bit of a revolution for me. And I can understand why so many people use lacquer paints. Now, as far as this kit goes, the Master Grade RX782 version 2.0, this is a fantastic kit. I haven't built the 3.0, but from what I've seen of it, it's sort of, it's a bit too over the top for my liking. Um, I think the 2.0 was kind of a really nice representation of the original RX782 from the anime. It's not sort of overboard, the proportions are really cool. So, um, you know, I really like this kit. Now, I understand there are lots of people who do Gunpla build videos on YouTube. So I wanted to make sure that my channel wasn't just Gunpla. And so the next model I created, so the next model that I built and painted was the Academy Non-Scale God Phoenix from Gachaman. Now I bought the version of the kit that came with the lighting kit. So it was, um, you can build the model without the lighting kit. Um, the version I bought came sort of bundled with it. I was really excited about this. It was the first God Phoenix model that I'd sort of come across. And, you know, it built up beautifully. The details are really sharp, but I just found it a little bit inaccurate compared to the original sort of Gutchman series. There was also an overuse of uh, decals, I believe, you know, compared to what you saw in the anime. However, saying that, you know, it was, it went together really well. It was a reasonable representation of the God Phoenix and the lighting kit was really set up for people who don't have any sort of uh, capability for doing electronic. So kudos to Academy for actually, you know, creating that option in this kit. Now I did return to Gunpla pretty quickly after that kit. And the reason for that was because this is a kit I'd actually already uh, cleaned up the parts and, and built. Um, it was just a matter of sort of painting it. So this was of course the perfect grade unicorn with the LED kit. Anyone who's built perfect grade knows there's a lot of work in it. And most of the work is in the actual cleanup of the parts because there are just hundreds and hundreds of parts. And this kit is no exception. 
beautifully engineered this kit the only problem that I have and this is something a problem I have with all perfect grades no water slide decals came with it so it still is beyond me why Bandai persists with the perfect grade kits still having stickers as opposed to water slide decals so the decals I used here were third party they weren't perfect but they help to provide that sort of extra detail for a fairly you know monotone looking uh, maker I've just used sort of a couple of different variations of white to kind of break it up a bit and again I use the lacquer paints and of course they went down really well I didn't have any issues with them so it's um, yeah good kit and of course here's the example of the the LEDs when they're sort of turned on then I moved to something different so one of my other loves is the Studio Ghibli films and my favorite Studio Ghibli film is Porco Rosso um, it is a beautiful film and kind of taps into that faux nostalgia about you know old aeroplanes and so this is the Savoia S21F the 172 second scale and there's two versions of this kit there's one uh, the late and the one that's the early version I can't remember which one's which but the only difference between them is the uh, having Fio in the front um, in the front nose so this kit beautiful you know detail um, really fun to build I sort of trialed a new masking technique that I hadn't done before so um, you know that was kind of interesting for me as well now I do have the 172nd Curtis that I've also built but I built that previously and you can see it here on the left now it looks as though it's a bit dusty and trust me it's not that's the finish of the flat coat that I used and unfortunately it really ruined the kit for me it just came across as very chalky and dusty and the matte varnish I was using it was actually the Vallejo matte varnish which I hadn't had issues with previously so I'm not sure what happened maybe it was just a bad batch but I was really disappointed with that now these were interesting kits the super deformed macros Valkyrie special set one I actually have special set two sitting in my uh, stash but anyone who's watched the the video series I did on these probably understand why I'm holding off on doing the the uh, the second set I thought that going into these I thought they'd be a nice easy build I thought they'd be pretty straightforward but they required a lot of work a lot of cleanup they were really built uh, uh, the model kit is a repop of an older um, model kit model kit so I should say um, and the fit isn't terrific if you want to just slap it together and put stickers on it you know do it as a, a weekend build you know with your kids or something then it's perfectly suitable for that but I wanted a really clean finish with mine so there was a lot of work in the parts clean up and fixing up the seams where parts were put together as halves and also I had some issues trying to find uh, water slide decals that would fit because the, the kits just came with stickers so sometimes I had to mask and paint other times I had to sort of use what I could find but saying that as much work as there was in them they were really incredible kits in the fact that they actually transform from the fighter to the gear walk mode and then into the batroid mode so really quite amazing bit of engineering there's actually quite there's a little bit of part swapping to do that but they just kind of look fantastic um, now I haven't got a photo here of the batroid version of them but uh, if you go back and watch the video there's plenty of photos there to see that the other thing that was really interesting about this kit was the uh, the weapons that you can see them holding here they were obviously designed to be spring-loaded and actually fire missiles fire little plastic um, missiles that come in the kit but the kit didn't come with any springs and there's no mention of it in the instructions so it was quite interesting to you know purchase some springs and actually get that firing mechanism working I'm sure it's probably around some sort of safety concern or something like that but the guns are especially designed to have a spring in them and so you can actually fire plastic missiles it's not particularly powerful or anything but it's another interesting gimmick that would have been you know back in the time probably would have been one of the selling features of the kit one of my other 
One of my passions is uh, Space Battleship Yamato. I grew up with what was called Star Blazers here in Australia and in the West, but um, sort of going back in my, my adult years and, and watching the original series Battleship Yamato, um, I fell in love with these Mecha Collie kits. So these are very small kits, highly detailed. I've actually built all the original ones that came out of sort of the, um, you know, the original uh, the original lot of Mecha Collie kits and the detail on them are pretty ordinary but you know they were from the 80s so it, it kind of made sense. The modern Mecha Collie kits have a huge amount of detail and are absolute joy to build and light so you can go to extraordinary levels of detail if you want or you could just sort of paint them one color or snap them together and you know that's it. Um, so I had a lot of fun sort of building these. These were the, the multi-deck carriers from uh, Space Battleship Yamato 2199. And I had a lot of fun putting these together. And of course I lit them as well. So there's multiple LEDs in each of these, you know, in the, the carrier decks and also in the rear engines. And again, I haven't included photos of those, but you can go back and watch the video and, uh, and see the result of that. I do like to mix up my model kits as far as scales and also subject matter. So I'm as as much as I love building mecha, there's you know I like building sort of vehicles and you know sometimes doing some figures that sort of thing. So I like to mix it up a bit. And these 135th scale uh, Universal Century High Graph kits from Bandai, which came around I think in the early 2000s maybe um, or mid 2000s. This is, these are really interesting kits and the fact they're trying to sort of tap into that traditional uh, armor scale of 135th but with a sci-fi sort of slant to it. So I really enjoy building these kits and this one in particular I sort of wanted to challenge myself to not over weather the kit because some stuff I've done in the past I tend to sort of over weather it so you know this was a nice opportunity to do a bit of subtle weathering and I think it came up reasonably well. It was also an opportunity for me to do some figure um, painting. I'm not particularly good at figure painting, so it's another opportunity for me to build up those skills. Going back to the Macross universe, this is the, uh, the Wave 172nd Destroyed Phalanx, and I've previously built the uh, Destroyed uh, Tomahawk as well. So for this kit, I actually went back to using Vallejo Model Air. And in that sort of short amount of time using lacquers, I kind of forgotten how tricky using water-based acrylics were with an airbrush, you know, dry tip and all that sort of issues. But the reason that I went back to those colors was because they were colors that I'd used for the Tomahawk kit. And I wanted them, they're sitting together on the shelf, so I wanted them to match. These kits are fantastic. They're just so well engineered. Um, the way Wave has set them up so that seam lines are sort of hidden away as part of panel lines. You know, just really fantastic kits. I understand they're a bit hard to get nowadays, but uh, if you can get your hands on them, then I certainly recommend them. They are just, you know, a, a dream to build these things. And of course they look fantastic. You know, they're, they're quite a chunky size model kit and they've, they have quite a presence on your shelf. Going back to Space Battleship Yamato, this was a, a buddy build that I did with Jim Chandler. And I'm very grateful to him for inviting me, you know, for the opportunity to actually do that. I've never sort of done a buddy build before. And it was really nice to sort of just build something knowing that someone else was building in the same kind of model universe, you know, using the same scale, well, the same box scale kits, you know, from the same universe. So that was, um, you know, that was really good. I really enjoyed that. And of course I did the, um, the Cosmo Fighters. Again, these kits are just great to build, uh, incredibly detailed. I did light these and you'll notice, you know, the bases are sort of the same to what, as what I did with multi-deck carriers. I think going forward, I actually have a lot more of these Mecha Collier uh, kits in my stash now. So I will be building more of them in the future and guarantee that. But I might change the way that I do the base. So um, 
this was a good you know it was just a plumbing fitting that I used a plumbing uh, 40 mil PVC pipe cap but I'll be using something that's probably a little bit neater in the uh, in the future one of the problems with some of these mecha collar kits especially the 2199 sort of stuff is that they came with stickers as opposed to water slide decals so this one in particular you can see the logos on the wings there they're actually stickers and I had to try and cut as close as possible to the edge of them in order to reduce any of that kind of you know stick clear sticker edge that you might see so that was a bit of a pain in the neck it wasn't impossible and look you know from a bit of a distance it looks fine but uh, thankfully it seems that most of the mecha collar kits coming out now actually come with water slide decals which is just fantastic pretty happy with this one as well you know like the, uh, the metallic sheen thankfully this one didn't have as many stickers on it so it was pretty straightforward this one now the Bandai 148 scale Lasner was actually something it's sort of one of the first kits that I've I've built that I don't know very much about the anime or the manga at all and the only reason I built this was because and I show in the video and I've still got it um, a Lesnar I had a lot smaller kit of it when I was a lot younger and it was sort of the first mecha kit that I actually ever built so it kind of was a bit nostalgic to actually build this thing even though I'd never seen the manga or, or read the anime so it was nice to do this thing you know give it the love it deserved as far as painting it up in its actual colors so when I built up one you know when I was a teenager it was sort of whatever enamels humbrol enamels I had at the time and I think it was brown and black and red and that was kind of about it so the colors were completely wrong but it's all I had at the time so for me this one was more of a you know going back to my younger years of modeling and, uh, and doing something a little bit better a little bit more fitting for it Back to the 135th Universal Century Hard Graph Kits. This one, of course, had a lot bigger vehicle in it, and it was an opportunity for me to do some more weathering and also, you know, build up again my skills with doing the figures. So I think maybe with this one, I probably went a bit overboard with the weathering in some places. I think it's maybe, um, yeah, a bit too much, but, uh, you know, the overall result still looks pretty good, I think. You can sort of, you know, see there, I did a bit of chipping, probably went a bit overboard with that, you know, and the streaking effects. But for me, every model I build is a learning experience. I think when you go into model building, it's very easy to sort of get caught up in the idea of saying, this one's going to be perfect. You know, this one's going to be the best one I've ever done. But it doesn't quite work like that. There's always problems with a model kit, you know, and I don't care how professional you are with your model kits. You know, even the best model builders and painters they, they come across problems, you know, things don't always go to plan. So it's just each one is a learning experience. And as much as I enjoy seeing my kits on the shelf, I do actually really enjoy that part of it. For me, it's also that journey, you know, what are the skills that you learn along the way and, and how do you fix some of the, you know, how do you overcome some of the problems you come across. Now, this may be probably the simplest, but one of my favorite builds that I've done in the last 12 months. I was so happy to see this kit released by Wave, which is like the Academy kit. It was a non-scale uh, version of the God Phoenix from Gachaman. Now, to me, straight away, I could tell that this one was going to be a lot closer to the original anime, and it was going to be a lot representative of it. The kit went together beautifully, and I think the proportions are sort of spot on, so I just really enjoyed it. Uh, building this kit and like the Academy kit it came with the vehicles and uh, You know the attachments that the vehicles Attached to the God Phoenix so it comes with all of that as well Now here you can see a comparison between the Academy on the right there and of course the the wave on the on the left So the Academy kit is bigger But I definitely think that the wave one is more representative of the uh, the original anime back to the Macross universe um, now previously I had built a Bandai version of the Regult in 172nd scale the standard type and that was my understanding is that's actually a repop of an old MI kit so I was again really excited to see sort of a new 
I guess, a, a new version of this kit and being done by Hasegawa. I hadn't built a Hasegawa kit before, so I was pretty excited about that. The other thing I wanted to do with this one was light it up like a Christmas tree. So I knew it was going to be challenging. I didn't realize how challenging it was going to be. And part of that is because of the nature of the legs. So I definitely wanted lighting sort of down near the, uh, the feet there. And there's also thrusters on the back of the legs. But it was, you know, quite tight, get the wiring in there and sort of the logistics of having so many LEDs. Because I think there ended up being about 15 LEDs in it altogether. So there's, you know, the thrusters on the side of the body, there's thrusters on the, you know, uh, bottom knuckles of the, the legs there. And there's also a number of LEDs around the hatch. And so here you can see a comparison between the Hasegawa version and the Bandai, um, the Bandai one. Now the Bandai one isn't, the colors are not even close to being correct. It was just what I had at the time. I'd actually built that one quite some time ago. And as much as I love uh, anime and manga and Japanese pop culture, and a lot of that has to do with the time I spent over there, but also because of the TV show, the shows I, I grew up with, I'm also a fan of science fiction in general. So when I saw this kit come up, I was, you know, really excited about it. But it was by a company called X Plus, who I knew nothing about. So, you know, I was sort of taking a bit of a gamble. The kit itself was really reasonably priced, I thought. And of course, it's the 1 8 scale uh, machine and winch from the movie Metropolis. So you're talking about a movie that's nearly 100 years old, um, but it just has it's been so influential as far as you know sci-fi movies that came after it and the machine of mensch here is of course iconic an iconic sort of figure in the movie but this kit you know i thought oh yeah it'd be pretty straightforward i'm just painting it one color turned out to be a little bit trickier than that but it came up beautifully and uh, really happy with this one and so we're sort of getting to, you know, this was the last model kit that I've done just prior to this video. So I want to just sort of spend a little bit of time about what I plan to do in the future. Um, I've got quite a stash of kits. I always have had, I can't help myself. I see something, I have to buy it and add it to the stash. But I will continue obviously to build some uh, Yamato Mecha Kole kits. I've got plenty of Macross kits, you know, from, uh, Valkyries and all sorts of stuff. Also the SDF-1, I've got a couple of versions of that. So I'm hoping to sort of build those. There will be some more Gunpla. I can pretty much guarantee that as well. But I also want to mix it up with some other things that, you know, I'd like to sort of surprise you with. So I am going to continue making videos. Um, I think the first years went has gone really well. And one thing is that the whole thing was a bit of an experiment for me. So. I'm not really good at building models to a timeline. And so for me, making videos, any of you who've been around since the beginning, you'll notice that in the first sort of few months of running my channel, I was putting out videos once a week. I'm now doing it once every two weeks, just because that's a little bit more manageable for me. Making myself put out videos every two weeks, it means that I am a lot more productive in my models. I'm getting through a lot of them. I'm finishing a lot more models than I ever have done before. And so for me, that's a really positive experience. I'm seeing more and more of my finished models appear on my shelf. So that's the main reason why I'm actually doing this. Now, the fact that other people appreciate what I'm doing is fantastic. And it's kind of a, um, a great benefit for me to see other people are actually getting something out of it. So on that note, until the next video, I will catch you later.